Hey y'all, me again. So I wanted to do an update, a part two, to the first video I did about Pelican Island in Galveston, Texas. And I think maybe I can just clear up um, a real common misconception and save a lot of people a lot of time by saying this. The island as it exists in this timeline has existed like this for over at least 60 years. And in fact, the bridge going to the new island was built in 1958. The college has been there since at least 1965. I was born in 1974. The bridge and the college and the island as it exists today, according to the history of this timeline, existed way before I was born. So it doesn't matter if you send me links or make comments about how the history clearly shows, if you just Google it, the history clearly shows that at one point, and this is like back in the 1800s, it was a couple of small islands. Now it really sort of depends on what webpage you, you go to because honestly the history of Pelican Island leaves a lot to be desired. Maybe that's just a coincidence, but I do think it's, um, it's a little odd, the history of it. First of all, that there's just not much available now. Um, and the pictures, they're just, there's like three pictures of, of what was supposed to be a really popular immigration point um, in the 1800s and early 1900s. But anyway, based on the history of this timeline, this island and this bridge and the university have existed out there since before I was born. So it doesn't matter if you can send me links about how they dredged the channel or the sand wars, um, all of which are really interesting, no doubt. But they have absolutely nothing to do with Pelican Island being a brand new island. And that's kind of how the Mandela Effect works. Um, in my timeline, it simply didn't exist. In some of y'all's timeline, it obviously always did. You have experience with it. Some of you commented that you used to work out there. Um, other people have said, yes, of course, they went to the university there. And then other people, people I, I think are from my timeline, said, what, what, where did this island come from? Where did this bridge come from? So it's, it's basically because we're from different times. It, it doesn't really have anything to do with dredging sand at all. And last night I tried to make a really good video. I mean, I had like title cards and maps. I had eight maps from the 1800s all the way up to 1994. Everything in between. I have a map from 1974 that shows you that Pelican Island was huge, just like it is now. And 1974 is the year I was born. So I try to put together this really, really cool video for you. I even have a picture of me at the spot that I mentioned in the first video. Remember I talked about the cement platform and the big black metal thing that came up and, and the guy across the bay who lived out on his sailboat. I have a picture of me holding fish on that platform. And that's how I ended the video. But here's, here's what happened. The more I worked on that video, the more I looked at the pictures and the, and the maps, and it's actually kind of hot starting right now, my insides just started going, and you know, it could be, I ate too much asparagus. That is entirely possible. I love asparagus now. But also, I think it's just, it's weird to force yourself to confront things that you know never existed. And I don't mean no, like, like I know in my brain, Pelican Island never existed in my timeline. And I know that because, well, A, I lived out on the island, and B, I did a ton of research. So I know that in my brain. But when I say 
when you confront contradictory evidence, evidence that says this thing has always been here, but it hasn't always been here, what well, kind of makes your, I don't know, your tummy hurt. Like it's more than a brain thing. It's more of a cellular thing. My body, something in my body just says this is, there's something wrong. Now, I don't think there is anything wrong. It's just the, like cognitive dissonance. It's like a very physical cognitive dissonance when you're confronted by information that contradicts your previously held beliefs. That's what this is, except for it's more than just I had an opinion about the death penalty and then my opinion changed. This is, there was no island and now there's an island. Um, and, and so, you're welcome to do all the research and maybe at the end of this video I'll show you the picture of me fishing. I'll just throw it up there, but I'll tell you this, it might make your stomach hurt too because it shows stuff behind us. I know exactly where we were facing. I know where the picture was taken. We were facing what used to be an empty bay with a guy who lived on his sailboat. This is a picture of my mom and I with our fish. In my timeline, there should not be any land at all behind us. In this picture, there's like some land. It's weird. It's not what I, but there is, there is some land. And I kind of hesitate to show that because then people are going to say, well, see, it's in your picture. God, makes my stomach hurt. And if you don't understand the Mandela effect, then yes, of course, that makes sense. Then you're going to look at this picture and you're going to say, it was there. I'm just telling you that it wasn't there. And if you understand the Mandela effect, then you understand that. Now, I don't know how residual evidence works. I don't know why I have a Capricorn mug that still has a goat on it. But I do know this. One of the first things I did when I learned about how everything changed in retroactive continuity, meaning that things change now and everything associated with that in the past changes. One of the first things I did was I looked at my family photos. I was curious, are they the same? If everything has changed, then have my family photos changed? And I have a very, had a very small family. I had a mom and a dad and me, that was it. And when I moved, I got rid of most of my pictures because I started thinking who's gonna care what I, a baby picture when I was three years old. Who's going to want to see that? So I'm not going to keep lugging these all around. So I got rid of most of my family pictures. But I love my family pictures and I've looked at them a whole bunch. And when I looked at them after I woke up to the Mandela effect, to me, just in my opinion, it looked like they were all taken one second or two seconds before or after the pictures that I remember. And sometimes when I look at my family photos now, we're a lot happier. And I don't know what that means. A pretty happy childhood. I mean, you know, it's all relative. Um, but there's like this picture of my grandma who I only met a couple of times, but she was always kind of a stern woman. And I don't ever remember seeing her in, in these two pictures I have smiling, but in these pictures now, she's just, this huge grin on her face and it's and it's odd and my dad is smiling a whole bunch in pictures and he really wasn't a smiler at all and I don't know if maybe in this timeline my childhood might have been I don't know maybe a little happier maybe we hung out on Pelican Island all the time I don't know I got really off track I do apologize um, and maybe I'll throw up that picture now of my mom and me with our fish and what could potentially be Pelican Island in the background. Make of it what you will.